Hello. So you want to start a Minecraft server and host it on the Google Cloud for free for you and your friends to play on, but you don't know how to set it up? Well, you've come to the right place because I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. The first thing you're going to need is a Google account with an active payment form associated with it. We're going to be taking advantage of the free trial that comes with every single Google account and each new payment method that gives you 90 days of access and up to $300 in credit. Once you've logged into the Google Cloud website, you're going to be presented with a screen like this. You're going to be in a project and there's lots of different things you can do. The first thing that we're going to do is create a virtual machine to run our Minecraft server. So I'm going to click this button right here. It says create a VM. That's a virtual machine. It's going to take us to this big page with lots of different things that we can configure. And I'm going to go through the main things that we need to. First off, we're going to give it a name. We're just going to call it something simple, Minecraft server. You can change your region to somewhere that's closer to you. I'm going to stick to Vegas because I live in Western Canada. Whichever zone it gives you doesn't really matter. Next, we're going to look at our machine configuration. Now, depending on how intensive a server you have, you can change how much CPU and memory you want. I prefer to go down to custom because I want about four cores and about 10 gigabytes of memory. Uh, and as you can see, this little price up here is going to update. Now, because we have $300 in credits over the next 90 days, we just want to make sure that we're staying about $100 a month. And there we go, $96. So we're going to use up our full credit, and that's going to be perfect. Now, that's everything we need for our machine configuration. We can come down to a couple more settings on this page. Our boot disk, we're going to change slightly. So under boot disk, we're going to click change. And we're just going to change our boot disk type to an SSD persistent disk. And we're going to click select. Easy peasy. Under identity and API access, we're going to click on this button here, set access for each API. We're going to click on that. It's going to bring this big list up. We're going to go down to the one that says storage, third from the bottom, and we're going to change this to read write. And that's all we need from there. Now we can keep on scrolling down. At the very bottom, it says advanced options. There's two tabs we're going to look at in here. First of all, we're going to go to our networking tab. This is where we're going to get our Minecraft IP address. So what we can do, first of all, is get a network tag going. So we're just going to do Minecraft dash server. And we're just going to type that in again. And now when we click enter Minecraft server, it's a network tab. It's going to help us locate that uh, network later. We're also going to go down to our network interfaces. We're going to click on this drop down in the default network. And a lot of things come up. What we're looking for is the external IPv4 address. When we click on this, it allows us to reserve a static external IP address. We're going to click that. We're going to give it a name. We're going to click Minecraft IP. I've done this before. Uh, we're going to click reserve. And it's going to take a few seconds and it's going to pull an IP address from the cloud and it's going to reserve that for our Minecraft server. And when it generates it, it's actually going to allow us to use this IP. Uh, you can see it here, MCS IP. This is the server IP that you're going to give to your friends and they can use it to connect to the server. So we've got that done. We're going to get out of the networking tab. Last thing we're going to do, we're going to add a storage disk. So we're going to go down here to disks. We're going to add a new disk. Uh, we got some options here. I'm just going to call it Minecraft disk. We're going to want to make sure it's a blank disk. I'm going to change the type again to an SSD persistent disk. I'm going to change the size to 50 gigabytes because that's plenty for our server. And we're going to click save. And that's it. So we can click create. It's going to take a few minutes. And that's our virtual machine. So in the next step, I'm going to show you what you do with that. All right, so now we have our beautiful virtual machine instance, but we have to do some configurations inside the machine. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect to our machine by pressing this little SSH button. What this is going to do is it's going to open up a terminal that we can use to communicate with our server. And finally, after a little bit of waiting, we have our SSH server connection. So what I'm going to be doing is running through a whole bunch of commands and sending them here. Now, Rather than typing them all out yourselves, in the top of the description below is a link to a paste bin where I've put all these commands that I'm sending. So if you want to just grab them yourself, you can copy them right out of there. And if you're confused, if something doesn't seem to be working, you can just pause the screen, take a look at my terminal. But I'm going to be doing this rather quickly because we've got a lot of commands to send. So to format and mount our disk, first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a directory. We're going to call it our Minecraft directory. So I'm just going to type in this command right here, click enter. We now have a directory. The Minecraft directory. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to mount our disk to that directory. So I'm going to type in this command. Just like that, does some magic. Our disk is, sorry, formatted. Now we're mounting it. And those are the three commands that we need to do 
Oh no! I understand. We have an issue because, of course, we named our Minecraft directory with a capital M. And there we have it. Our disk should be fully mounted. So now that we have our Minecraft directory created and we have mounted and formatted our disk to that directory, I believe, we are going to be installing the Minecraft server. So first thing we need to do is make sure that we have Java. So I'm going to run this quickly updates all of the default packages. I'm going to run this command. This is going to install our Java. Uh, I believe this will install the most up to date version of Java, which should work with our server. Hopefully this is going to take a second. The command I just used is wrong. It does not install the right version of Java, but the command that is in the paste bin in the description below is the right one. So use that one instead. Don't use the one I used in the video. Thanks. It's done. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to actually navigate our way to our Minecraft directory. And you can see we're in that directory now. And we're going to install our Minecraft server to here. So we're going to go into sudo, which uh, allows us to install things. Now there's two different options you, you can go here. I am personally right now going to be installing a fabric server because fabric is a wonderful API. It's like a mod sort of forge. Uh, it allows you to install some performance optimizing mods. They're all server side makes the server run better. You can, uh, of course, just install a normal Java Minecraft server. Um, so in the paste bin that I've linked down below, there's two options here. I'm going to be using the commands, of course, to run the fabric server. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to curl this. This is going to download the server jar from the fabric website. And that was really quick. It did it instantly. So now we can actually just run the server. So this is the command right here, this Java. Uh, it's using the fabric server.mc.jar. If you're using just a normal Minecraft server, it's going to just use server.jar. And we, when we run this, okay, so I installed the wrong version of Java. That's my bad, but I think I have the right version and things should be working now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our uh, super user version of the Minecraft directory, and I'm going to try running the server one more time. Uh, what should happen is this. We've started the server. Java is working. Hallelujah. But of course, the server can't start yet because one thing that all Minecraft servers need is an agreed upon EULA. So now when we type ls-1, as you can see, there's some files generated, including this one right here, eula.txt. So I've included a command. What you're going to be typing now is this nano eula.txt. It's going to open up this EULA. And all we have to do is come over here and click around. Just kidding. You can move around with the mouse and the keys and we're going to type eula equals true and then we're going to press control and x to exit it's going to ask us to save we're going to press y and then it's going to ask us to write a name we're going to press enter and there's our eula so now our eula says true so when we run that command from before just again pressing the up arrow key allows us to go through the commands we can press enter and our minecraft server should start. So as you can see, we've created a server. It's generated the spawn area, and this is actually the entire command log for your server. So you'll see the players logging in, you'll see the chat, it'll all come through here. But the problem is when we close this SSH browser, it turns off the server. You can also turn off the server by typing slash stop, which is what I'm going to do right now. That's command server stopped. It's going to take us back to our Minecraft directory. And what we're going to do is we're going to run the server in a screen so that it can be happening in the background and we can close out of this whole Google Cloud mess. So we're going to run this command here. It's going to install the screen. Uh, that's really easy. And now instead of just typing the command that we typed before, the Java command, before that we're going to type screen dash s mcs. So now it's launching our server with a screen behind it. So we're going to do it. It's going to start our server again. We'll give it a second to load. And after it's loaded, or even while it's loading, what we can do is press Control and A at the same time, and then D. And what that does is it detaches our screen. So the Minecraft server, it's running in the background, and everything's happening. If we want to get back to it, what we can do is we can do screen-r mcs. That resumes our screen. We can come back to it. You can see it's still running. But again, we want to get out of it. Control A, and then D and we're out, detached from the screen, and the server is still running. Okay, so the Minecraft server is running, 
but currently no one can join it. So the final step before people can start playing on your Minecraft server is to enable a firewall rule. So we're back on the Google Cloud main web page. We're going to go up to the navigation menu here, and instead of going under the Compute Engine tab to our virtual machine instances, we're going to go down to VPC network, and we're going to go to firewall. When we click here, it's going to allow us to create a firewall rule. So everything's loaded here. We're going to click Create Firewall Rule up at the top. We're going to give it a name. We're going to call it Minecraft Rule. And then down here under Targets, we're going to do specific target tags. This is where we're going to type in our Minecraft tag. So we called it Minecraft Server earlier, if you remember, in the Networks tab section. So there we go. Under Source Filter, we're looking for IP ranges. We're going to type in a range of 0, 0.0.0.0 0. 0. slash 0. That's perfect. Then we're going to come down here and we're going to type, we're going to check TCP and we're going to type 25565. So this is the default Minecraft server. You can configure this to be any port you want. We're going to use that one. And we're just going to click create. And there we go. Now we have a firewall rule. So now when people use that external IP that you generated earlier combined with this port, they can join your Minecraft server, assuming that it's up and running. Okay, so I'm going to do a little test here. The server's running. This is our IP address that we reserved earlier with the port. I should be able to join server, and let's see what happens. And it's worked just like that. We are on a Minecraft server that is currently being hosted by the Google Cloud. One last important detail before we go. Now that you've made the server, it's running, you can access it, you're going to want to be able to configure some things. So we're going to do a very similar process to what we did with the NanoDev text. We're going to first of all resume our screen back in our shell. Here's our server. I was playing around for a little bit. I uh, I tried to speed run. Yeah, I got some achievements. Uh, no big deal. Return to sender. Yeah, I popped off for a minute. Uh, we're going to stop the server. Uh, we're not playing on this world. We're going to have a whole new world. I'm going to install data packs. It's going to be beautiful. Uh, before we run the server one more time, we're just going to do a quick ls-1 to see everything that's in our thing. We have the whitelist file. We have our world folder. Uh, we have mods folder. And we also have the server.properties. So what we can do is nano server.properties. And this is going to let us open it. So this is where you can go through your server properties. You can change the difficulty. You can expand the view distance. You can change your port. You can disable or enable PvP. There's lots of different things you're going to want to change on your server. And that is it. That is how you use Google Cloud to create a Minecraft server that you and your friends can play on. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you have any questions, leave comments. If anything wasn't clear enough, let me know. I can definitely help you out with a little bit of IT support. And I hope you enjoy playing some Minecraft with your friends. Take care.